Hey guys, I'm making this quick tutorial just to show you how to customize your Mac. Now this is whether you have a MacBook Pro, an iMac, or any. Um, we're gonna start off just telling you that you can right click on your Mac. So you know on a PC you have the option to right click and you get this, okay? On any folder that you click on, you're also supposed to get this if you right click. So first of all, you're gonna go into your system preferences, then you can look that up up here which would be the fastest way for some of you okay so see this right here you just type in system preferences okay so once you get that you'll open this up or another way just go to the apple here and system preferences same thing there's a bunch of ways to get system preferences so once we have this here we can customize some of our Mac. First of all, as you can see in my screen, I don't have the dock. So the dock is this right here. I'll just, um, but the fastest way it is to take this off or put this on, okay? So here's the automatic hiding right here, okay? So once we click on that, you'll see it hiding, not hiding. The reason why I make it hide, because I want to maximize the space on my computer screen. Um, I don't need to see them all the time. Anytime that I drag down my mouse, I will see this, okay? And when I put it up, I won't see them. So whenever I need something from my dock, I can just drag my mouse down and I can pick whatever comes up. Um, from here, you can customize the size in anything from, from your dock down here, okay? So that's the size that I like. Magnification, same thing. Um, you know when I'm dragging them across, they come up a little bit bigger. So that's what this is right here. Um, the effect... Well, whatever effect you like to minimize things. Okay, besides that, um, on your mouse, let's go to your mouse. Okay, to activate the secondary click, you're gonna click on this, okay? So once again, you go to mouse or trackpad if you have a MacBook, okay? On your, on your trackpad, it's gonna be a little bit different, but you do have to select secondary click. Now on your MacBook or MacBook Pro, MacBook Pro Retina display, whichever you have, um, this will work for any MacBook actually from um, any MacBook made from 2005 up to right now the Retina display ones It's gonna work. Okay, you do have a right click. So here you have the option um, If I had a trackpad this is my iMac. That's why you don't see it um, Well, you don't see the option for a trackpad, but I don't have one, but you would see this in a, a MacBook it's just basically the same thing to get right click <clears throat> you can tap with two fingers and you can also click on the side of the trackpad, okay? So on the right side, you can click and you get the right click and you can tap with two fingers, which is actually pretty cool. Um, besides that, you have more gestures here. I would activate them all. They're pretty cool. Um, they show you each one if you go through it. The little video will tell you how to manage them, okay? Um, you can swipe between pages. Um, this is pretty cool if you're in Safari, so I'll show you that in a second. Um, <clears throat> for mission control, you just have to tap with your two fingers on the mouse. Okay, this will not work with any mouse. You do have to have a Mac mouse, unfortunately. So, just giving you a heads up on, on that. That that tracking depends how fast you want to go with your mouse. I usually put it on max because I like to get to be very sensitive. Okay, so I'm going to show you the right here with Safari. So, let's say you have a few pages open. Okay, so let's say I have this open and this other one that you saw in the back open as well. And I have other stuff open and I have a bunch of stuff open. And I want to see it all. Well, you can tap with two fingers like it showed you there. Okay, on your mouse. And you will get this. Hold on one second. There you go. And then you can see all your windows that are open. Plus this down here. So it's pretty good to have. Um, I do like mission control. That way you can see everything that's opened up. Um, besides that, to get to mission control, what I like to do instead of the tapping, um, I just activate my secondary click and let me just show you quickly the Safari stuff. Okay, like it shows you right here. So let me just open this up again. More gestures between four pages, swipe between pages. Okay, so you see how that's doing that. So you need to do the exact same thing on your mouse and you will swipe. So I had other pages open before I opened this one. So if I swipe back, I will see Wikipedia that I had open before. I can swipe back to this one, okay? 
same thing with this one, same, same type of deal. Um, so I can swipe between back and forth instead of, you know, going back here. So if I click back here, you will see Wikipedia and I can go back, right? But with swiping, it looks much cooler. It loads actually a lot faster. So that's pretty cool to see on the Mac. Um, besides that, guys, so that's it for the mouse. I'm not going to show you more stuff. There's a lot more to go into it, but I just want to show you quick stuff that you will find very useful. On Mission Control, if you have, same thing. If you have a lot of windows open, you do want Mission Control. So on Mission Control right here, I have my left option uh, key to be that. Um, when I tap on it, well, when, I, when I tap on it, um, I will get Mission Control and we'll see all the windows. Or I can put left control, left shift, whatever key you want, or any um, F14, or any one of those as well. Um, I do like to keep it on my left option key because I don't use my left option key that much. I use the right one most. So it's not that you're going to choose your left one and you're going to lose it. Um, you still have your right one and other one. So let me show you. I'm going to tap on my option key. There's my control. Okay. Mission control. Uh, besides that, you can put application windows. That's going to show you all your apps that are open. Not so useful for me. Uh, show desktop. That's very useful. However, I'll show you another way to do it here. Same thing. You just choose the key that you want in order to show your desktop. So let's say you have all these windows open and they're all cluttered up and uh, you can't see your back and you need to see something on the back. All you need to do is tap on that key that you want and you will see it. The way I have it set up, it's here in cut corners. Okay, right here. So just click on that and you're going to see this. So what does this mean? This means if you drag your mouse to this corner of the screen, so that's the left side, top side, you will see your desktop. Um, you can also choose from Mission Control or anything that you want, really. Um, what I like is just seeing my desktop. And here I like to start my screensaver. So if I'm making a video, I'm just loading up on YouTube, I might just want to put screensaver right away. So I'll, instead of going to options or anything, really, all I have to do is drag my mouse to this corner. I can't show you that, that right now because my video will just stop and you guys won't see it anyways but I will show you how the desktop looks um, and what I mean by that. So I'm just going to click OK on that. Okay, I'm going to zoom out so you guys see. Okay, once I'm zoomed out, you're going to see um, how I'm going to drag my mouse to this corner right here, the top corner. Okay, so I'm just dragging it there slowly and there we go, my desktop. Okay, so I can open something else up that I want. I can go here, open up a program that I want to open up. And then I can just go back by going to that corner again. Okay, this corner right here. And I have everything back. So this one's really useful. I find it essential to um, configure in your Mac and take advantage of all that it has. Um, so that's part of configuring your Mac to make it look how you want. From here, you can also do your desktop, uh, screensaver, everything. So just click on it and you can choose any one of these from pictures, folders. You can also click on any picture that you download from the internet and make your desktop um, picture just by right clicking on it. And yeah, um, for your screensaver, same thing. I mean, you can do any of these ones that you have right here. I'm not really a fan of screensavers. I like to just turn off my screen. So even if you have an iMac, you can turn off your screen. To do that, you want to go to Energy Saver, okay? So that's this option right here. And Energy Saver, we're just going to click on that, okay? So I do recommend you to um, leave this as default, but then again, it depends what you're doing. Um, I use my Mac just to upload videos, and that takes forever. So it never sleeps. Um, display sleep right away so as, so as soon as I just leave for a minute I'm not touching anything on my Mac for a minute it just goes to sleep so display will go to sleep that will not stop any of your programs from processing so if I'm uploading a YouTube video or any video or um, just rendering anything um, it will not stop it it's just my screen just my display okay so I do recommend to put that um, also if you just leave your computer downloading something and you do forget to turn it off I do like to put a schedule on it. So here's the schedule. Now this means that you can make it um, you can make it start up or go to sleep. 
So what I like to do is not make it go to sleep, but click on it and put shutdown. I would put every day basically, and I'll put it at 12, one, two. So I usually have it set up to two. I'm not really sure why I took it off. I usually do have it put on. Um, I might have not want my iMac to go to sleep the other day, so I forgot to turn it back on. But yes, I do have it shut down every day at 2 a.m. Just in case I do forget to turn it off if I'm downloading something. And um, if you know it's, gonna, it's not going to take all night to download, then I, I would suggest putting something like this. So just click OK on it, and it will go to sleep at that time. If you're downloading a torrent, um, your computer might not. Because it does have to shut down the torrent downloader. And uh, if you're using uTorrent, for example... Um, this will not work. It'll actually make a conflict and you have to click OK on it so it won't go to sleep or, or um, turn off your computer shut it down. So just a heads up for that. For any other program you will. So you're all cool with that. Um, something else that you do want to see um, well sharing you guys don't want that. The very last thing that I will show you is languages and region. So a lot of you um, speak two languages and like to write in two languages. So let's say you're writing Spanish and English. So this is what you want. Um, you want to go to languages and region. Just just to show you. Okay. And then keyword preferences. I'm teaching you the long way to get to this. Okay. So on keyword preferences, this is where you want to set up your keyword as you want it, okay? So I'm in Spanish as well because I make uh, videos in Spanish, as many of you know. Um, so to add a language, all you need to do is click on the plus sign here and then you can add a language to your keyword. That way you can switch between languages, there's shortcuts, but I'm going to show you the long way, um, which isn't that long, but here's some shortcuts just in case. Um, so I'm just going to close this up. Now let's say you added a language such as Spanish. Now I have Canadian English which is up here, so let me just zoom in on it. So you only see this once you add another language. If you only have one language selected, if you only want one language selected, you won't see this up here, but if you do want two, two languages, um, you can switch back and forth. So I can put Spanish. So what does this do? It means that when I type in something, in anything, Safari or Pages or anything, um, let me just switch it to Spanish again. And let me click on this, and I'm going to put the letter, let me just zoom in so you guys can see. This letter does not exist in English, and that's already, let's call it an ñ, so that's exactly where the ñ would be on uh, a real Spanish keyword. So um, there's no special anything that you have to do with that, so you can change between keywords, and there's there's other letters and, and stuff that you accents as well that you want to use in Spanish and that's why and this will auto correct you in Spanish as well so if you forget to switch it back to English it will not correct your English it will correct it to Spanish um, you can kind of do the same thing on your iPhone so whenever you want to switch back to English just go up there click on it and switch back to Canadian English I have it to uh, US English as well no big differences um, so that's for that, and that's the end of it, guys. I'm not going to show you anything more. These are just the real basics. If you want to get more into it, just go to your system preferences and see more options. If you have any questions, comments, just uh, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to rate. Thank you.